Hello, happy summer, almost spring. How are you today? Um, this is Jilly Bling, and I thought today would be a great day to make a card kit from the new catalog. Everyone that has seen this has says, oh my gosh, it's I love this one. So I thought this would be a great one to start out with. There's plenty of other kits, but let's start with this one. And it's surprisingly very easy and very quick. So I will show you the kit. Here's the finished products, but let me show you how it comes. So when you get your kit, it will look like this. Here are the directions, and this makes 16 cards. It comes in the cutest box that matches the cards, all the same color. And it has this little latch right here. And inside are all the papers, everything you need to make these 16 cards. Um, if you can, before you get started, and I'll put this in the, the description, so before you start making your kit, and I hope we can make it together. I, that's a lot of fun. I've heard from a few people that they pulled out their paper pumpkin or whatever the kit might be, and we made it together. Thank you. That's lots of fun. Um, when you get your ribbon, because it's been in the box and it's been vacuum sealed, it's a little bit, um, it has creases in it. And to get it flattened out, I took this whole bunch, put it in the sink, got water all over it. Then I took one end, put it underneath my Big Shot, stretched this all out, and I put two punches on the end, and I just let it sit until it dried. And look how it's nice and flat now. So if you have a minute, maybe do that in advance of doing the kit. And it comes with... I think this is grape. I don't think it's Highland Heather. Um, grape Baker's Twine. Put this bag in here hoping it would help me get everything out. But it didn't work. Okay. So there's the box. It comes with matching envelopes. And um, if you live near and if you happen to um, want to come to class when we do the card kit, I will supply um, paper for the inside, and as we go, I'll show you the inside of each one of them. And I just made it to <clears throat> somewhat mimic what's on the outside. Um, I use gold um, embossing powder, heat embossing, and that was for here. Um, and then I'll provide all the stamp pads and everything needed to make the inside, and I'll provide the papers for the inside. But we won't do that today. Um, I'll put pictures on my blog of all the insides of each of the cards. Okay, so here's directions. We talked about that. Um, in here, it says the different things that what your kit includes, additional products needed. And some of the kits, they're called all-inclusive. And this is called a project kit. Let me see, a card kit. So that does mean that means that everything is not included. They say that you need these stamp pads right here, which are Heather Grape Bride, Brush, Blushing Bride, and Blackberry Bliss. And those are listed right here. It also says that you need adhesive for stamp and seal, dimensionals, and blue dots. Um, when I made these kits. This kit, I didn't need that many glue dots, but yes, definitely need dimensionals. And then right below it, it says coordinating prod, um, colors. And I use those colors plus the ones that are needed for this kit to make the insides of the card. Make 16 cards for each. So, let's see. Oh, and I put gold embossing powder and gold on the inside of my cards. Therefore you need Betty Boop or your embossing buddy. <clears throat> and I use some masks and Versamark. So that's added on. So we won't use the, these today. Shaded spruce 
Soft Sea Foam and Mint Macaroon and Versamark. But when you come to class, we'll use this. Okay, so we'll use these four. We'll use that. Um, maybe five or ten glue dots, and that's just to attach the ribbons and definitely dimensionals. Um, for the inside, this comes with some really nice words, but I wanted something to put on the inside of the card. Get well soon. You can't be celebrating your day if you're not feeling too good. Get well soon for a very kind and loving friend. Each of these words are great all on their own, but I don't think they coordinate together. So I was looking for a stamp set in the catalog that had a similar font and that the words would coordinate. And this stamp set seems to work really well. It has kind of a script, a playful script type, a soft um, script with, um, what is that, block letters? So we'll use that when we do the inside. And this we'll use just mostly for the words today. And here are the pieces. Push those up a little bit. So I'm going to start out by setting out one of each of the cards. The envelopes I'll do later, and you know I had planned on stamping flowers on these, but didn't get around to it. But they're really nice, just as they are. So if you do, that's great. If you don't, that's fine too. So all these envelopes are set off to the side. So, this is Blushing Bride, and this paper... Well, there should be three more. I'll find it. It goes there. Here's another Blushing Bride one with this gold rim around it. That one could go here. Here is the Purple Posy. There. And here is Soft Sea Foam. They go here. Here's the other ones. They're underneath all these little die cut elements. Okay, and you know I noticed that they give you many more items than what you need, which is very generous, but then I always feel obligated to to use them. And I did the cart kit <clears throat> just as it was shown in the pictures. Um, I might try, try changing it up. Oh, these would be cute on the inside of the card. You could do that. So at this point I'm just punching them out and then I'll take all these little punch outs and put them on the card <clears throat> where they'll be used. They're really pretty. These little gold accents, I like it. Flowers and flowers. And then when it comes to these leaves, there's all different styles. And I think you could use any leaf on any one, whatever you're in the mood for, it's good. Because there's so many different ones. And looking at the picture, it was too small for me to figure out which one I should put on there. But it doesn't matter. Put lots of them, <clears throat> lots of them on there. Right before I started this video, I had a granola bar and it has peanuts in it, and it does this to me every time. I should know better. From now on, I will know better. <clears throat> See, that's a different one with that little different tip. <gasps> Is that the same one? No, that one's bigger. So many different ones. Okay, and then for. These are for the words. And it's nice that they give you a few extra. Not that you would mess up on any of them. Not that I messed up on any of them. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry about that.
we had company all this week and um, I was trying to get the carpet cleaner here before they were here. Didn't work out, but that's fine. So he was supposed to come today at 10 and it is two and a half hours after that and I even sent him a, a reminder an hour before at 9, I think it was like 9.05 saying, okay, this is the gate code. Just a confirmation. Nothing. So, if you're in the area, you know a good carpet cleaner. I think I need a, a new person. Okay, so this circle one goes on this card. This nice shape goes on the blushing bride. This shape goes on purple posy. And this one goes on soft sea foam. Got it. Little purple flowers, no, because so, I already did one, I just need three. You only need a pile <clears throat> of four. No, this one here, three. Okay, so all these are extra. So... Little Blushing Bride Circle Flowers. One, two, three. You count to four. Same with this one. Okay, so there's one extra of these. Okay. Purple Circle Flowers. go on to here so if I'm going faster than you're going as you're making this just hit those two little parallel lines to pause it and then you can catch up because I'm going to make just one of each of these today because I don't think you'd want to sit through while I make all of them but hopefully you're doing the same thing so maybe it won't be so bad okay so here's three little blushing bride regular flowers okay so the leaves this first one I'm gonna look for a double and a single one two three maybe I'll do a bigger one there's so many different options Okay, and this purple posy needs a double and a single. It looks like those are both little. One, two. Oh, I only have two of those. Okay, well I'm going to reproduce a little one with two singles. And then three singles. Okay, that one's good. So this one has two singles. One, two. Three, four, five, six. Okay, and this last one has a double. And a single. One, two, three. Okay. Obviously, they need to be mixed up. It doesn't matter. They're all leaves. They're all green. They're all cute. Okay. So to get started, I'm going to start out with this one here and stamp on this. Get well soon. And that I will use. Gorgeous grape. Um, so this stamp set, let me find the box again. This stamp set, I had to do my little magic trick with the nail file, and then I got good ink coverage. Um, the little magic trick, I go over that in last month's paper pumpkin, if you don't know what I'm talking about. But you'll see how 
nicely. It ends up stamping. The first time, let me see if I have it. I think I have my whoops card over here. Um, it just, it didn't have good coverage. The ink kind of balled up on the rubber. And it's working well now. So here is the circle. And I should find something dark to stamp on so you can see the outline of the shape. There we go. Okay, we get well soon. Turned out good. Well, I'm at it. I might as well do all of them, right? Okay. The words are done. So the next step is to put dimensionals on the underside of the designer paper and put it onto the card base. So all that prettiness can go right there. So I have one, two, three that are ready for dimensionals and I put them somewhere real safe. There they are. So I'll put one in each corner and I might put an extra one maybe on the side. I've been becoming a little bit more generous with dimensionals these days. I don't know why. Maybe because I know Lori will give me a hard time. And it makes her cringe. Right when I started stamping, I would take all of my dimensionals and immediately cut them in half. So it was just little strips, so it was only half the size. And it worked just fine. And then I remember at work, one time I got my annual increase and it was minuscule, but I said to myself, from this point forward, I'm not going to cut my dimensionals in half. I don't need to do that. It's going to be a treat. And ever since then, I'm using full dimensionals, living uptown. Okay, let me see how this opens like that. This card goes this direction. Oh, and one of my cards here, I put it upside down, but it worked out. The um, designer paper. I think it's this next purple posy one, but it worked out just fine. It looks like I'm doing all three of these cards. I didn't plan on that. Okay, when it comes to the fronts, I won't do that. Okay, so all the card base is done. So I'll work on just one. I'm trying. I'm going to need words. That's for later. One pink flower, one leaf, and a double leaf. Okay. And all these little beautiful bits will just stay right there on top. I'll set off to the side. Okay, so for the ribbon, and I know on the inside it's written just fine, but somehow seeing it in really big letters makes it better. <laughs> so, need a pink flower, double leaf, single leaf, 10 inches of ribbon, and stamp it in grape. Okay, all that's left is 10 inches of ribbon. And here is my lovely flattened ribbon. 10 inches. There's 10 inches. And to put this onto the card, I think the kit implies that you're going to use glue dots, but you don't need to. You could use whatever adhesive you have. And I know the words are going to go right there. So for now, well, I was reading on a stamper's blog. They said no longer do you need to do the check mark with this um, to cut the adhesive strip with this new tool. I just tried it. It didn't work for me. 
I'll keep trying. Maybe I'm sure I'm doing human error. I'm sure I'm doing something wrong. Um, so to apply the ribbon, I'm looking where do I want it to end? Right there. I want it a little bit of an angle. And I'm going to look at this bit. I want this to be a little soft fold. So I'll put it there. And I wanted the fold right there. The next part is I want the fold here. And to go up like this. Um, I have some extra. Should I do it again? Just because the ribbon's so pretty and I don't want to throw it away. Yeah. Okay, so it'll go a little further. There, now I'm making use of all of it. Am I frugal? Okay. Now, the words are going to go on with dimensionals. And, you know, every time I was looking at this card, I did the projects last night, and I keep coming by my desk. I keep noticing that it's kind of popping up here. So maybe make sure to put a dimensional down at the bottom to hold it down. Okay, so lots of dimensionals. That's what it all boils down to. That's lots. I'll put that right about here. Make sure the words are going flat, straight. So next is the little flowers and leaves. So start out with the flower. I'll put a dimensional way off to the side on this one. Maybe some adhesive on this part. Okay, so there's dimensional there and adhesive there. That's where it wants to be. And so for the little leaves, I think this is a good time to use glue dots. So maybe it is more than five glue dots. Just tuck it under a little bit. I don't want to cover up that ribbon. It's very pretty. And this one can go here. Oops. Okay. So, this one is done. That went really fast. And on the inside to make it kind of match. And I did the gold embossing powder and heat set it. And then these are the stamps from inside the um, gorgeous posy kit. Okay, one done. Put these over here. Oh. <laughs> So this is something I was going to say, something not to do, but I think it might have its place in vintage -y type um, card making. So the ribbon, at first I took it, I'm not going to do it this time because I know there's ink on here, and I just put it into my pad when it was all wet, <laughs> and I used some of the Stampin' Mist Cleaner because it smells like roses, and I like it. Okay, so... I got this all wet and I was sitting here waiting for it to dry and wait and I thought I'm going to take my heat tool to it. Well the heat tool kind of burned through and shriveled up all of this organdy type ribbon. It's fine with the satin. Um, <laughs> and of course I pulled it away and I was like oh my gosh I ruined it. But this would be really pretty if we were doing like a vintage collage type card. That would be great, just kind of setting off to the side because it looks vintagey. So, if you like vintagey, I got something for you to try. This, it doesn't exactly work for that. Okay, onward. Next is the Purple Posy card. Purple Posy, and this is the one I did upside down. 
So when you look on here, they have the flowers up in the top and then putting the words and the ribbon over it. I did a whoops and I have the flowers down here and the words and the ribbon up here in the kind of blank spot, but I like it just because these flowers are so pretty. Okay, so let me see how much ribbon. It's this one here. So, need a purple flower, got that. Small double leaves, got it. Small single leaf. Three and a half inches of ribbon and a bow. Okay. So, ribbon, three and a half inches. Ribbon. Three and a half. Okay, so if you're cutting things at an angle, how do you measure it? Am I measuring three and a half from here to here? I just do it in the middle because that's like a forever question of mine. I don't know. Okay, so just a little bit there and a bow. I'm going to do the bow out of this grape twine. Um, see how it's all curly? Which is fine. Um, for making a bow, all this curliness would drive me crazy. So if you just take your finger and kind of straighten it out a little bit, look at that. Much better. There's still a little bit of curl, but not as much. At least now we can work with it. Okay, there's a bow. Tighten it up. Okay, bow. Okay, so let me get out enough for one card. Base, designer paper that I might put upside down. Words. One purple flower, one single little leaf, bow, ribbon, and a double little leaf. Okay. Yeah, that's really hard to cover up. Just, it's so pretty. I might continue with my wayward ways. Okay, so I'm going to stamp the greeting on here. For a very kind and thoughtful friend. Oh, I could think of all kinds of people that need that. Deserve that. And this is done in Blackberry Bliss. Good thing they gave me a few extra. I'm hoping I'll stamp straight. Okay, hey, fingers crossed. <laughs> it's a little crooked. Maybe I'll just put extra flowers on. Okay, so um, I'll put the designer paper on dimensionals. I think one of them I did it just flat down on the card base, um, which is fine. But when you do it with dimensionals, it leaves just this little shadow. You know, all the little understated, elegant things we do. That's another one of them. Okay. This is ready to attach. <laughs> Should I do a right side up one? No, I think I like it upside down. I don't want to cover up the prettiness. So I would put this on with dimensionals, but I know that the ribbon needs to be tucked right down in here. So I will take, should I do glue dots or adhesive? I'll do the adhesive. Just a bit. Right there. And I want this pointy end down at the bottom. I put the adhesive on crooked, but that's okay. It's going to be covered up by the words. I want to put this right into the green. If I put it over here, it's kind of, it gets lost. So how about right there? 
Okay. And this goes on dimensionals. Ooh, I might be needing another sheet of dimensionals. Wonder why. All done. So this is not centered. Goes right about there. And it hangs outside of the gold rectangle. Okay. And the flower needs dimensionals. Well, I like my fancy dimensionals better. Let's see. Those aren't fancy. Hold on here a minute. Here we go. Fancy ones. I just put packing tape over them so I don't have to peel off the um, all these little backer pieces that end up everywhere. They're in the car. They're in the bathroom. But I think it's just because I'm a little lazy. Okay, so I will put this flower. How about right there? And... The leaves, maybe this one could be on a dimensional. And because it's going to tuck under the flower, it's okay if I don't get it perfectly hiding. Okay. And this one, how about this one go flat? So this one I'll give two little glue dots. So yeah, you need. I think you're going to need a handful of glue dots. Unlike originally said, where you just need it for the ribbon. Yeah, you need a few more. Okay. And then this one will go up here on the side of the label. That's very sweet. Okay, so a glue dot for the ribbon. If you take your glue dot, Pretend like this is a tortilla, you're in the kitchen, and you're going to make a burrito out of it. Just kind of keep rolling it over to make it one long, skinny old glue dot. Can you see that? Let me get a little closer. Yeah, you can see it. Um, And I'll put it right here. Hold it down with the bow. And then you can kind of position the little legs of the bow and the bow by pushing them into the glue dot a little further. I think this needs a bit of trimming. Okay, so that one is done. Now on the inside of this one, well that turned out pretty. The paper is smaller than what I normally do, but that's because I stamped this crooked and I had to keep trimming it. But I really love purple posy paper, so I'm good with that. Okay, so this front is done. Now I'll go back and do the fronts later and post pictures on my blog if you want to copy what I did on the inside. Or if you come to class, you'll have originals right in front of you and I'll provide the papers. Okay, so that one is done. Okay, what's next? Next is soft sea foam. Um, if you're not in the area, and if you order the kit and the stamp set, um, I'd love to get your address and send you the card insides. It just makes the card so much more complete. Um, so let's take one card base, one designer paper, one purple circle flower, oops, one pink circle flower, and what is this, just two leaves, any two, there's one, two, and then a banner for the words. Okay, so all these pieces go over there. <coughs> okay. 
Wishing you comfort and peace at this time. That's nice. This is a beautiful card. It's very peaceful. And that was stamped with Highland Heather. Here's a stamp. Perfect. I think each of the four ink pad colors needed for this, they're used one time on the outside and that's it. So all these things are going to need dimensionals or glue dots. So I'm going to flip them over. That's some forward thinking. So this goes here. So I was waiting for this carpet cleaning man and um, all the things that we planted during the COVID pandemic stay home time, everything is taken off and everything is blooming and it's such a pretty morning out there. Yeah, might need to get out there. So where should the words go? The flowers are pretty but there's no sparkly gold right through here. Therefore, that's a good place for ribbon. Oh, I didn't cut the ribbon. Let me see, this one says five inches of ribbon. My straightened ribbon. Five inches. That might be too long because it's going to get jammed up on the envelope. Need some sharp snips, that's for sure. Okay, so I'm going to stick down just the top part of it, the top part of the ribbon, the satin part. Still hanging over a little bit, but that's okay. And dimensionals on. All of these little bits, maybe not the leaves, definitely the flowers and the banner. Okay, so I'll start out with the banner right in the middle. Might have done the ribbon crooked. Looks like it's going uphill a little. Maybe when I stick this on, it'll behave, I hope. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so the flowers. This one goes here. I'm not sticking them down too hard. In just a minute, I'll push them a little bit more. That one could go there. Okay, and the leaves, I think those are going to go on this time with glue dots. I'm trying to shake it up a little bit. And I'm putting two glue dots per leaf. Probably could get away with one. So this one could go right here. And this one could go right down here. Oh, that's really cute. Very sweet. So here's the inside of that card. I think the next one, the inside of the card, I didn't really catch on. Ooh, I should use gold embossing powder. So it's kind of boring, but all these with the gold is just so pretty. Okay, so that is done. Oh, no, it isn't. I think I need a bow. I need a bow. Let me see, straighten this out a little bit. OK, 
Okay. And I'll need a glue dot rolled up like a tortilla. And that's going to go right in between these two little flowers. Okay. Very sweet. That's a good word for this kit. It's just sweet. And here is this one. Let me check the inside. Like I was saying, the first one, yeah, I did a little bit of gold, but it's mostly just stamping. When I do the others, I'm going to put more of the metallic powder, gold embossing powder on them. Okay, so base paper, a designer paper, um, a double leaf, single leaf, pink circle flower, purple regular flower, and a greeting banner. Okay, so stamp on that. I'm going to put dimensionals on these, glue dots on these, dimensionals on this. Okay. Celebrate, celebrating your day. Done in Blush and Bride. Just fine. So that's all the stamping. It doesn't take much, and it's nice that they give you extras because some of us happen to mess up on stamping and get it crooked. So thank you, Stampin' Up. Dimensionals, dimensionals, flowers, get dimensionals, maybe, ooh, double. Banner gets dimensionals. Everything does. Okay, except the leaves. Look how pretty. Okay. Ah, ribbon. How much ribbon? Ribbon is four inches and a bow. Don't forget the bow. Four inches of ribbon. That end is flat cut. I like the diagonal cut. Four inches. Might as well do the bow too. Okay, so I keep on thinking I need to tell you. When you're doing, when you're working with twine and you're making a bow, um, just until recently I was always having a hard time because when I would tighten the bow, the little pretty bow pieces would get all twisted and I was unhappy. And it never looked good and equal and smooth. Like, see how this one is twisted just a little bit right here? But I haven't cinched the knot yet. So if you leave the knot loose, and see how easily this still flows through it? And because the knot isn't tight, I don't have to deal with the twist in the string. So now, this one has a twist in it, so I'm going to take it out just a little bit. Get it untwisted, and because this isn't tight, I can hopefully see how that 
bow is just simply a bow. It's not all twisted little ears. Okay, and now that the bow is where I want it to be, now I'll pull it tight. Okay, hope that makes sense. And in my twine, for a while I was putting pins in it, and every time I picked it up I would get poked. But now I put a little slit right there, and that just goes into the slit, and it keeps it all tidy. I like tidy. Okay, so to attach the ribbon, I'll put a little strip right here. You know, that adhesive is stickier. I like it. This is the new adhesive. Okay, so I'll put this about here. And I'll put the words on. How about there? Next could be the flowers. All this gold is so pretty, I don't want to cover it up. Okay, trying something new. It's going to go right there. And then the leaves, I think I decided those are going to get glue dots. Maybe. Now I need one more glue dot for the bow. Okay. I want to see that gold. Just because it's so pretty. Okay, leaves are on. Now I'm going to take my tortilla, turn it into a burrito, and the bow can go right here. Sweet. So this is the inside, and that's the outside. So we did one of each of the cards. Do you notice how quickly we did them? I love this set, and look at that box. Okay, thanks for tuning in. If you can, subscribe to my blog and give me a thumbs up if you like the video. And let me know if you have a chance to um, do the project and we did it together. That would be great. Um, have a great weekend, and I'll see you tomorrow or Monday. Bye!